Uh, so allow me to switch over to my trusty Let's View. So here I actually have a, this is my um, device. So you can see it live, okay? And I've got the Cognos mobile app open. I'm connected to a Cognos environment. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little tour overall of what you can do in here. And then I'm going to walk through a specific kind of use case example. And I'll wrap up by giving you side-by-side -side mobile versus Cognos to show you um, the big, like best practices, right? Let's say you want to roll this out. Okay, what do you need to know to successfully roll out mobile in your organization, especially if you're a developer? How do you need to develop visualizations and dashboards and things like that for uh, for mobile consumption, because it's a little different. There's some rules you're going to want to keep in mind here, okay? Overall, uh, when you look at this, you can see I'm on a section called boards, okay? Boards are the heart of the Cognos Analytics mobile app. A board is basically, it's like a pin board. It's kind of like Pinterest for geeks, data geeks. Um, and a board is where you can take visualizations from different objects in Cognos and bring them together in one place, okay? A board, you can create a board and share it with others. Developers can build boards and share it with, uh, say, a particular group or role within Cognos. And a board is the hub for, for setting alerts, which is something you're going to want to do within Cognos. Um, so here I've got a board created. You can see up here, um, it says utility info. So I'm, I'm thinking about getting solar panels installed on my garage, and I'm actually using Cognos to assess my electricity usage and evaluate different proposals from solar vendors that I've talked to. It's kind of just a personal project I'm working on. But I wanted to show you kind of, I pulled some elements from the solar dashboard that I'm building into this. So you can see I've got um, average kilowatt hours by season up top. Below that, I've got total kilowatt hour usage by month, right? Different visualization type types that I have here. They're all collected into one place in this board. Now, um, these all come from one dashboard. It can come from any number of dashboards, but an important thing to note with this Cognos mobile app is that uh, it is only content from dashboards and explorations today. So your reporting content is not going to work in the mobile app today. The old Cognos reporting app still exists. It's not going anywhere for the time being. You can use that for your reporting content. The new, so there's the reporting app, which is the one that's been around for a long time, and the analytics app which is the one that accesses content from dashboards and explorations. Now, the roadmap for this, I've been told, does include eventually merging them into one. So you'll kind of, this will be the, the nexus, this will be the go forward app eventually that all Cognos content will be in, but it's important to understand the distinction between the two right now. So I'm looking at this board um, and I can, uh, I mentioned all the things I can do here, right? Now going across the bottom, there's a content section. The content section, is exactly what you have access to in Cognos, except it only shows you the objects that are available for usage in the mobile app. So I can't see reports, for example, in here. I can't see data modules or packages. I can see dashboards and explorations. Now you can see I have, I have access to my recent. This recent carries, <coughs> excuse me, carries across uh, the uh, desktop slash browser experience and the mobile app. So if you're on your in a browser and you're messing with a dashboard and then you come here in the mobile app, you look at recent, it will be the top object that you see here, just like it would on your browser. Um, and then you have access to your my content and your team content and a search up top. So if you're looking for a particular type of metric or name of report, you can search up here. There's some important things to keep in mind for naming conventions for objects and fields that I'll, I'll touch on later. Um, but I just want to kind of show you the search function there. Um, notifications, this is very cool. So you can see I configured this um, to notify me every 15 minutes of a data condition on a board that I built. Um, and you can just kind of see these notifications piling up. So what Cognos is doing uh, is every 15 minutes, it's checking to see if a particular get data condition is true. And if it is, it's sending me an alert. And you can see the history of the alerts here. Okay. And then finally, the assistant. The assistant is the natural language query portion of this app. It is exactly the same as the assistant from, uh, from the dashboard and expiration tool. So, um, you know, all the same features. I've, I've tested it, queries in the same, you know, do one in mobile, uh, on the mobile device, do one in the web browser. Do they return the same result? Do they render the same visualization? The answer is yes. So the experience is consistent across uh, the, the different ways to interact with the assistant. Okay. 
So that's a, that's a brief overview, but how do you actually use this? Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to create a new board. By clicking up here, you're, you're gonna see, I'm gonna click the plus button up here to create a new board. And I'm gonna give this a name, we'll call this, um, say sales leadership, okay? Sales leadership. Now I have a, a blank board ex that, that exists. Um, if I wanna see all the boards that I have access to, I can click here on the name of a board and it will give me this where I can search for boards and see every board that's been created so far. So right now I have three. The sales leadership is the blank one I just built. And you'll see um, that it, uh, right now it's blank. There's nothing on it. I wanna add some visualizations to it. So how can I do that? Well, the first way would be to go over to the content and um, browse to a dashboard. And, and then I can just pick visualizations from that dashboard uh, that I want. So let's say I go into the SDB folder and then the mobile folder. I've, I've put some, some uh, I've created some dashboards in here that I might want to access. And I look at the going mobile dashboard. So here you can see the individual objects, uh, visualizations, I should say, not objects, visualizations. It's important to understand that from the dashboard. And they're listed here. And I can go through and choose to add them to the board. So in this case, maybe I'm interested in uh, this bar chart right here. So I'll click on the bar chart and you'll see uh, when it loads in that I'm gonna have, first of all, it's, it's kind of gonna give me a zoomed in view of the visualization. And then I'm gonna have the ability to add it to my board uh, by clicking the, the pin in the upper right-hand corner right here. And one thing I would note, it's taking a, it's gonna take a little while to load here. I think this is because, you know, I'm, I'm running everything off of like one computer on my home network and Wi-Fi and everything like that. And also, I don't buy very expensive mobile devices, if I'm being honest with you. And so I think there's a lot of chugging going on on this device uh, that hopefully you won't have because you're smart and you bought like a pre more premium Samsung or an iPhone 12 or something like that. But my cheapo phone uh, <laughs> chugs a little bit in a way that I don't think yours will. Okay, so you can see I've got the visualization here. And if I want to pin it, I just click the pin button and I add it to sales leadership, okay? I get a notification saying the pin was successfully added to the sales leadership board, and uh, I can go back and see it, but let's say I just wanna add a few others. I'll quickly add a few. Um, I won't wait for them to load. You don't have to wait for them to load to pin them. So I'll, I'll add this chart to sales leadership, and um, let's add this KPI and this KPI, okay? Very quick and easy to do. It's good that you don't have to wait uh, for them to add in. And if I go back to the board, you can see I'm in the sales leadership board. And now I have all of those visualizations that I just added to the board available to me. Right now, the only person who can see this board is me. Um, but you are able to share this with other people, which I'll show you in a minute. Now, the second way to add visualizations to the board is actually through the assistant. So in this case, let's say I'm really interested in seeing revenue by, uh, say revenue information by year for an individual state. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a visualization that actually doesn't exist in any of my content by talking to my phone, okay? So I click on ask a question and then I can click on that. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna say, let me remember what I'm gonna say, revenue by year for California, here we go, okay. Revenue by year for California. And then I kind of hit the, the you know, return, return key, uh, the go button. Now it's calculating and building the visualization for me on the fly based on what I said to it. This is one of the things I really like about doing this on a mobile device as opposed to on my, um, on my, on the desktop because you can talk to it, you know, uh, rather than typing. It's just kind of a, a very interesting interaction pattern that you have available to you uh, thanks to the fact that you're using a mobile device. So here you can see um, I've got, it created a visualization for me. Now it's telling me up top that it's using the source sales module, but it also found other sources that might be more appropriate. So it says, you know, I'm using sales module to answer your question, but perhaps you would like the same query, but run against one of these data sources instead. So I can switch to a different data source if I want, 
or I can switch between visualizations. So it, auto, it, it suggests what it thinks the best one is as the first option. There's actually an AI in Cognos that exists to pick the right viz. Um, however, if I would like a different one, like the area chart or the bar chart, I'm free to choose one of those. If I want something real goofy, uh, like a radial chart, I can choose that. Um, but I'm a big advocate in general, and especially on mobile, of choosing the simple visualization types. And we'll get to why in a little bit. Okay, I wanna add this to my, my, my board. I can click add pin and we'll add that to sales leadership. And now let's go back to our board and you can see the very last option here is the visualization that I did not pull from any pre-existing content that Cognos built for me based on something I said to my phone. That's pretty cool. That is pretty cool. All right. A couple other things that I, I want to show you here before we get into the best practices. Uh, the first thing is going to be the alerting capability. So let's say that I want to know if revenue exceeds a certain value, okay? I can click on, uh, first thing I, I need to do, I need to click up here on the schedule icon. Um, so it's this icon right here. <laughs> See, I'm clicking on the screen. It's funny. It's this icon right here. And that will give me the ability to turn on notifications. So it's not on by default. When I turn on notifications, I'm gonna set a notification schedule. How often do I want this to run and look for the conditions that I set in the alerts? Uh, you can do it as frequently as um, every 15 minutes. Um, and you can choose what days it happens on and what times, that sort of thing. So let's just say I want it to run uh, daily. Once a day, I want you to run and give me the notifications. And I want you to do it at, um, oh, say 7 a.m. So the beginning of the day, this is going to run any notification that I, um, any notification that I, set on this board will run at that time. And it's running in the same way it would if you were interacting with these dashboards on Cognos. It's using the query service. It's doing all, all of that normal stuff. If you're kind of a Cognos pro, you know what all of that means. All right, now let's just configure, say revenue. I wanna know when revenue goes above a certain amount. So I, I click the little three dots here and then I'm gonna choose set alert and I'll call this um, rev revenue. Okay, and the condition I'm gonna set is that um, the revenue, so there's only one measure here. I, if there were multiple measures, I could choose which one I want, but there's only one. So when revenue um, is greater than, say, a dollar. So this is gonna trigger you know, every day, basically. And I want it to say, uh, go team when it triggers. I'll save that. And now I have this um, alert set. So every morning at 7 a.m. it's gonna check, is revenue greater than a dollar? If yes, it's gonna generate an alert that's gonna appear here in this notification window. So that's pretty slick. And that really gets to the, um, uh, that really gets to the heart of, uh, of why this is so cool, right? I can talk to it, I can set alerts, the alerts pop up on my phone. This is a different paradigm for interacting with your BI than what you've done before. And it allows you to push it out into realms of your organization that you've had no, pen you, you've had no uh, exposure, so like, like the factory floor or the warehouse floor or the you know, line crew or whatever it is where people are out in the real world who might need data uh, and you can get it to them through a device that they're familiar with and proactively alert them. Very slick. Okay. There's a couple questions that have come in uh, that I'm going to address. So uh, what analytics on the phone depended on the performance versioning of the phone? Absolutely. As I mentioned, you know, like this is a Pixel 3a. A Pixel 3a is not a very powerful phone. And, um, and so there is some local processing that goes on. And when that local processing happens, it's a little slow. Um, so that is something to keep in mind that that is going to be a constraint. Now, I do know that at least with IBM that, you know, they're working on ways to offload as much of the processing as possible to account for a wide variety of devices. So I think over time, as this matures, it will it will become less and less of a concern, but it's definitely something you need to think about. Um, an idea if and when PA sources will support alerts in, in the mobile app. I do not know. 
Uh, so I can take a note to talk to IBM about that and see see if um, if if that is a uh, if that's an option. Uh, will the assistant recognize FM packages as possible sources? Yes, the assistant does recognize FM packages as possible sources. Uh, the next question for executive presentation: Are there ways to alert based on criteria of the data, such as a KPI or some other thresholds, or is this only able to display the current metrics? Um, yes. So I, I think I just kind of showed that right. You can set a KPI threshold. Um, I did a really simple one, but you know, you can, like if I were to set, um, let me show you here. So let's set an alert on this one. Um, you can see that, that I have a lot more options here. So what column do I want to alert on? I want to alert on revenue and, um, what condition, you know, greater than or lesser than a certain amount. Uh, but then I can do specify alert rule filters. So I only want to look at a certain year, okay? And I only want to look at um, the navigation product type. And I only care about Q3, okay? So um, you can really get much more granular than that first example that I showed you. That was just a simple, simple example. Okay. Um, can you drill down in the data on the visualization? So uh, not really. Let me show you what you can do. Um, so there's more interactivity coming to these visualizations in time. Uh, there's that's the I think one of the most immediate items on the roadmap, based on my understanding, is that the ability to do. Um, oh, looks like we lost our screen uh, mirroring here. Let me reconnect that. It does that occasionally. Um, it's unfortunate, but uh, it does sometimes happen. So just let me go ahead and see what's going on here. See if we can reconnect. There we go. And let's jump back over to our handy dandy chart and full screen this guy. Okay. So um, sometimes you can pinch to zoom, right? But uh, you don't have great filtering options here. Uh, what you can do is set up the, for example, the tooltip um, uh, extension, for, right? Uh, it's something that you download that you, I see, this is a funny comment here. I'm gonna, it's throwing me off. There, so there's an extension you can download that will give you the ability to set tooltips and dashboards and that flows through to the mobile device. So you'll see if I click on one of these bars um, that I actually get a tooltip that shows me more than just what's visible on the visualization. So I'd encourage you to use that and to tell people, uh, teach your users that the tooltips are available in mobile. Um, this is in the Accelerator catalog. If you go to the Cognos Accelerator catalog, you will be able to download this extension. I do think in 11.2.1 or 11.2.2, it will become native functionality, but it's not today, uh, but it's coming. So then we, we got a question. Do we need a GoFundMe page to get Ryan a new updated phone? Um, yeah, yes, let's know. Thank you. I appreciate your concern, um, uh, wh whoever it was that, that said that. Uh, but um, I'm okay. I'm okay with my old slow phone. I'm a bit of a Luddite in some ways. You notice this vinyl collection behind me, right? So sometimes I like, I like, uh, I like old stuff. I just think of the phone as vintage, and then it's then it's much cooler. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, the final thing I wanted to show you here. Okay, so sharing this, I've created this board. Say I'm a Cognos developer. I built this board. Now I I need to give it to the executives, right? The sales leadership. If you click here um, in the in the upper right hand corner, this is where you access all the board options. And here you can see I say I have a manage viewers option. And when I click add viewers, um, this is going to become very familiar to you. So um, let's say uh, I could hit A. Well, look at these groups and roles. If you're a Cognos admin, you know these analytics users, analytics viewers. So you can create a new group or a role for the sales leadership. And then through this um, manage viewers option, choose who actually gets to see this board. Okay, so you can restrict it to just the people you want in the exact same way, using the exact same groups and roles that you would use uh, through the regular Cognos interface. No difference, which is really nice here. Um, so let me just pull that out of there because I don't actually want to restrict this to anybody. Okay, now that's a tour of the tool. Now let's talk about what are the best practices um, for doing this, okay? Um, the first thing I would say is, and I'm gonna, let's do a little side-by-side -side here. So let's get out of full screen and exit from this guy. So here I've got Cognos. 
and I'm gonna pin Cognos over here and we're gonna put the mobile app here just to show you like, what do these things actually look like? Okay, so the first thing to note um, is let's go over and look at this. This is the same dashboard in the mobile app versus the web app. So you'll notice that it's it's kind of pulling um, it's pulling kind of pulling the visualizations roughly in order, the order that you would read them, but not always. That's an important thing to note. I, I can't. It's like ninety percent of the time it goes from left to right and top to bottom, but sometimes it something will randomly be out of place, and I'm not sure why. So know that when you're you're developing this, that generally speaking, you know, you you want it to appear like in this one, it's doing a pretty good job, right? This one goes here, this one goes here, this guy is next, right? But then it jumps, it kind of swaps these two from the order I would expect them to go in. But in any case, um, the you know, it's roughly going to put them in the order uh, that you put them in. Um, as far as, as best practices are concerned, looking at, like, what are we going to want to do here? Okay, well, first of all, there's some things on this dashboard I did well and some I did poorly. One thing I, that is, I would say you want to do for sure is look at product cost, okay? This is not mobile friendly. Look at how it looks over here compared to the options that I've abbreviated. So one thing you'll for sure want to do is come in here and abbreviate things. And, and it's not just for these KPI um, type type uh, uh, visualizations, it's for everything, right? Things on, on chart axes. And I'll show you a great example of that in a second, but you don't wanna come in here. And if you look at the properties of this visualization, um, we can go into, or actually the fields rather, you know, you wanna check product costs and go to format data. And we're gonna change this to currency and choose the abbreviate option much prettier, much better mobile experience to do that. So um, now compare what it looks like here to what it looks like here, way better. Another thing to note is compare this line chart um, to this bar chart, right? Uh, the, this is an example of a, an object that has been mostly optimized for mobile versus one that hasn't. And look at how they look on my mobile device. This very, it doesn't look good. It's challenging to make heads or tails of. This is much clearer and easier to understand. Um, and and that's another thing. I'll show you some tips on how, on how to take care of that as well. Um, you want to shorten the auto-generated names. So look at the auto-generated name here. Um, it's, not, it's not friendly if you look as it becomes the kind of the bottom label of a chart. So you're gonna to wanna to go in and rename these when it gives really long auto-generated names to something short and easy to understand rather than gross profit, product cost, and revenue compared to plan revenue by retailer type. Not good. Um, other things that you're gonna to wanna to do. Okay, complex visualizations. Let's take a look at this one. Uh, this is too complex for mobile. I would argue you, you don't want this on, uh, on uh, even uh, through the web experience. But it's okay through the web experience, especially because you have the option to full screen it with Incognos. Uh, my mouse is like extra sensitive today. It's hard to control. Okay. So I can full screen it and now it looks pretty good. It's easy to understand, uh, but you're not going to get this type like this good of a view on a phone. So what you want to do is take a complex visualization like this and decompose it into smaller parts. So let me show you um, how you're going to do that. What you're gonna to wanna to do is something like this. So take this one, which is product type, and then um, year and quarter uh, with revenue. It's too hard to read on a phone. You don't have good options to, to work with it. And take a look when I decompose it into smaller, um, into individual visualizations for consumption within mobile, okay? What did I do here? Um, I sliced this by uh, the product type, okay? So we, we, we've we got, um, or rather the product line. So now instead of having one visualization that, uh, one visualization that has everything, I've got four visualizations that slice it into easier to understand pieces. And here's what it ends up looking like uh, through the mobile interface. So I can see I've got um, camping gear revenue, golf equipment revenue, mountaineering equipment revenue, and outdoor protection revenue. So this is definitely something I would recommend you do is you, you, you don't have more than four or five lines on a line chart. You don't have more than maybe seven or eight bars on a bar chart. And if you, you 
and and if you do need that much data, you break it into smaller chunks because grabbing it in mobile is really easy. I, see, I'm like, okay, I want to understand this. Well, here's my different product lines, and let me just oh, this is cool. Let's let's add these to my sales leadership, um, my sales leadership board. This also makes them easier to find. Remember, we've got a lot of search capabilities, and it's when you have camping gear revenue, golf equipment revenue, mountaineering equipment revenue, they're easier to find. Very specific names for specific things. Um, okay, and what does that look like on the board? Now you can see I added them in. They're easy to read, easy to understand. Compare these two to this one. Now, there are other differences between these two as well. You'll notice, look, I abbreviated the side here. Okay, rather than leaving it long like this. Um, there are some other things that, that you can do here to even make this easier to read on mobile, but like just a simple example of not good, good, right? These, these are the types of things you're going to want to do. Um, one thing to note too I, that I would advocate is you actually build mobile specific dashboards, okay? Um, even if you you have a dashboard that you like and has all the visualizations on it, and that's good and people use today, as you can see, it might not translate great to mobile. The other reason is that you can build mobile specific dashboards because you really got to think about a lot of the formatting is stripped out. So so let me show you an example here of a of um, a piece of of uh, where is it that solar project I was mentioning to you. And, and when I say it strips out the formatting, check this out. So let's look at energy usage, okay? This is something I like to do. So this is like three KPIs that are formatted to be next to one another. And then I kind of, I insert um, a, a kind of rectangle on top and then I plop some text in the middle that says, this is annual cost. So this is, this is my actual utility data. Um, and uh, what we're seeing here is my total estimated cost for the year the estimated cost during generation hours when my solar, I live in Michigan. So, um, you know, these are kind of rough um, or uh, yeah, rough uh, generating hours um, and, you know, non uh, generating hours or rather non generating hours and generating hours or something like that. Um, this, let me show you what this looks like in, in the mobile app. You're going to see that it strips out all that formatting. So, your formatting is all going to go away. It's smart to build a mobile specific dashboard that you want people interacting with. Um, so let's take a look at that. And that is, where is it? Solar project, content, energy usage. Okay. You notice all that fancy formatting I did to make it look kind of nice like that, it's all gone. Um, so you, you have the mobile specific version to format things friendlier for mobile and so that um, you have better control over what appears and you don't have these extraneous elements in there. It's easier for you to manage if you have the mobile, mobile specific version. Um, the, I would actually advocate that you, like one thing that I find really helpful is uh, if I'm building these mobile specific versions is to strict, like just build visualization libraries for a specific topic, okay? So if we were to look at, at content in here, and I'll show you, I've got, um, let's look in mobile, and that's not what I meant to click on. Sales KPIs is a great example of, of what you can do. So I've got global KPIs. This is like a KPI library of, like executives love KPIs. So this is just a KPI library of KPIs that they might want to interact with. And then what they can do when you teach them, like, hey, we have this mobile uh, content library where that you can go to to see KPIs. They could go into sales KPIs and see their global KPIs here and then add them to their pin boards as they see fit. Um, and then you can also break this down further by having, say, filtered KPI collections. So these are the same KPIs but I filtered the dashboard for just um, the Americas, okay? Same thing here, I filtered the dashboard for just Asia Pacific. So that is another thing that I would recommend you do is you, you build specific visualization li dashboards that function as visualization libraries. You put them in a mobile content part of your environment that are, are fine-tuned 
um, for the mobile experience. So it, it's really the difference between um, this looks fine in a visualization for the for the um, for you know when you're using Cognos on your desktop, but this is way better for mobile, right? And and so that's why I recommend you have two different two different versions for it. So if you look at uh, this declutter example, right? Huge difference between these two and how friendly they are to consume on a mobile device. What did I do here? Well, I removed the abbreviate. I, I removed completely everything on the left-hand side and I made it so that the, uh, the values of each bar appears above the bar. And look at the difference it made in the mobile experience just from doing that. So the, these are the types of things um, that you're gonna wanna do. Create a mobile library, give dashboards descriptive names for their content, right? So when you create a dashboard that is a library of objects for mobile consumption, give it a really descriptive name so that a mobile user will know exactly what it is. Think of it as like you made a book of visualizations for them. You know, a funny way, this is almost like if you're a Cognos 10 person, this is almost like a workspace <laughs> in a way. This is the idea behind, behind Cognos workspace. Um, Make sure you use accurate labels th for things for a natural language query. That's very important. If you are letting things called field one, field two, and field three flow through to your, your packages and your data modules, uh, the natural language query is not going to work. It, it's not, your end users aren't going to be able to use it. So make sure you're giving things names that will work for that natural language query. Um, a couple, I, I see there's a couple more questions. I'll, I'll take them in a second. Um, a few more things I wanted to show here, um, and let's just jump back into, uh, I don't have that open, so let's do this, um, that, that I want to talk about. Um, swap this guy. Okay. Um, let's get Let's View off of here. Let's View is helpful, but it, so it always sits in front of everything. It's... Okay, um, the best practice is summary. Build mobile specific content. Give things easy to discover names. S the simpler visu the visualization is the better. Fewer bars, fewer lines. Choose bars and lines over a lot of other visualization types, most of other visualization types because they're just harder to understand on a small um, form factor. Don't be afraid to build a lot of visualizations. Instead of trying to build one visualization to serve multiple purposes, if you have to build 10 visualizations to serve 10 specific use cases, go ahead and do it. You'll have a much better mobile experience for your end users. You can create mobile specific security groups to control who has access to what in the mobile realm versus the desktop realm. Of course, you don't have to. Um, you can rely on the same security for everything. That's one of the nice things about Cognos. Uh, but if you do want specific mobile securities, that security, that's an option for you. Um, and then I would suggest you ensure fields have meaningful names uh, for natural language query. Now, the final piece of this, mobile licensing. How much does the mobile app cost for Cognos? The mobile app is free for all existing license types. However, there is a new mobile user only license type that is available. This is for people who only have access to the mobile app. So they cannot log into Cognos, but they can consume Cognos through the mobile app. Uh, it's again, dashboard and exploration content, reporting and stuff like that is coming in the future. They have the full featured access to everything you saw in the mobile app. Um, it covers both executive and operational use cases is available on 11.1.7 plus. Okay. So if you're on a version, if you're on prem on a version below 11.1.7, uh, this mobile app is not going to work. You need to get to 11.1.7 or 11.2 and any of the 11.2 releases. The cost for this license is $5 per user per month. So it's pretty inexpensive. And if you think you have a, a worthwhile mobile use case, um, it's easy to, to acquire a few of these licenses and give it a shot. You don't need to give people a full-blown Cognos access just to use the mobile device. It's something I, I really, really appreciate about the way IBM is, is trying to roll this out. Okay, so questions that we have. Um, are you able to build dashboards on a desktop interface and deploy to end users with notifications set up? Um, so you cannot set the notifications up in the dashboard interface uh, through through desktop, but what you can do is you build the pin board or, or the board for them and you set up the, the notifications. And then you just use that, that um, manage viewers function to determine who has access to it. So you would build it and you set up the notifications you want them to have and then you just give them access to it. 
when you uh, pin a viz to a board, uh, it's more of a copy than a reference to the viz that was created in Cognos. So if a visualization ever becomes obsolete or if there was a problem with it, um, is there a best practice to clean up of old bad pinned visualizations? Um, this is a good question. So in my experience, when I've changed things um, in a board, um, I believe if I refresh the board, it actually captures the changes that I made. Um, but uh, I will check that out and, and get back to you. Um, what does it look like when you switch to landscape mode? Well, um, it's funny. This is not switching to landscape mode. It, it looks exactly the same. It, it, this app was actually designed predominantly to be used in the phone form factor. So even if you're on a tablet, it looks exactly the same. Um, are there easy share capabilities, dashboard KPIs, the social media or other apps? Uh, not at this time. That, that would be a really great thing to have. Um, but if I look at this, so if I go, if I'm in here, you notice I don't really have like a lot of sharing options uh, as far as, you know, sending this to Twitter or Slack or something like that. 